Hey, I want to personally welcome you. I'm so excited for today's very first episode of Closing Deals and Heels podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Hodges, and I wanted just to honor you for being here. If you're listening to this right now, you are so incredibly special. And if somebody hasn't told you lately how incredibly important you are, this is your message, babe. You are important. You're valuable. You're worthy of every single thing that you want in your life. And I, I truly honor you. And I just want to acknowledge you for all the hardships that you've been through in order to get to where you are today. The reason why I started this show is because I feel like so many times in business, us women are trained how to do business, but we're trained mostly by men, especially in terms of sales. Every sales technology uh, course I've ever done, every sales training, every sales book that I've ever read was always made by a man for men. And it really confused me because the sales training that I was learning when I was in a sales role, competing against other male sales colleagues, it just felt so out of alignment for me. The objection handling, how to call people, how to prospect. Maybe we'd be at an event and they could all go to like a certain club afterwards, or maybe a guy wanted to get a certain client and they got to take him to the golf course. And I'm like, where does that leave me? Because if I try to take this client out there to think I'm going on a date with them, and I'm like, there has to be different rules here. There has to be different rules and regulations in order for me to be able to sell in a feminine way that felt in alignment for me. So that is what this show is. This is a feminine perspective of sales, but also that it's in alignment with your integrity and the values and your belief systems of who you are. I want to be able to show you exactly how to make as much money as you want in a way that feels really damn good. And, you know, what you can expect from this show is for me to just be real and raw and authentic with you. I'm never going to try to pretend to be anybody else, and nor should you. I feel like so many times um, and in business and in entrepreneurship, there's people that get to certain levels, and then all of a sudden, you feel like you can't relate to them anymore. And I don't want that for you. I want you to be you, because who you are is good enough. Who you are is more than good enough. And there are certain attributes about who you are, certain things that make you so incredibly unique, that make you so incredibly special. And you get to honor that every step of the way of your personal journey. And why the hell should you listen to me? First of all, I was waitress for 10 years. I was a teenage mom, dropped out of school probably four times, um, and definitely had a lot of rocky parts in my life. And, you know, now being able to be creating a sales training company specifically for women doing six figures in under four months and now partnering with a huge multi-million dollar seventh level sales training company, which is seventh level, <laughs> um, this journey has been absolutely epic. And it has shown me proof of what is possible, that anyone can do it. And if you just have the right skills, that's literally it. If you have the right skills, the right knowledge, you can literally have anything that you want in your life. The show is for you if you are a lady, if you want to understand how to sell in a way that's based with integrity um, and a feminine perspective, if you need somebody to tell you that you're freaking good enough and that you're worthy of all you want, um, I'm here to honor you and support you and cheer you on. All I want is for you to understand how amazing you are. That's literally it. Um, and I wish somebody came and told me that. And I honestly wish I would have been able to believe them. And so I created this show just for you because I've been through a lot of shit. And if you can learn a little bit from me, then, you know, I hope that I can make you just a little bit more clear about how um, incredible you are as a woman. You know, in terms of where this all started, this is a trigger warning. So I'm, I'm just going to warn you, but it all means something. I don't know if you ever heard Ed Millette's story, but I listened to his story and it reigned so true with me. He was talking about as a kindergartner, he wouldn't know whether his dad was drunk or not. And so he would come home and he would take care of his sisters and his mom. And then his dad, when he got home, would be really drunk, would come up to the door. And he said that he got so good about telling whether or not his dad was drunk or not that he would put his ear up to the door. And by the way, his dad would jiggle the keys in the door. He would know. Now, if his dad was drunk, he would get his daughters and, sorry, his sisters and his mom upstairs as fast as possible. And 
he would convince his dad from the moment that he opened the house to try to get to the couch as fast as possible. And that God was preparing them for a time to do what he does now. After I heard that story, it really rang true with me because my story is a little bit in alignment. I remember being in my living room floor, laying on my stomach in a fetal position and being kicked in my stomach over and over and over and over again. My husband at the time was extremely drunk and was screaming, didn't make any sense. I remember looking up to the sky and like looking at God and crying, screaming, as I really thought I was going to die that night. At the same time, I didn't want to be too loud because my three-year-old daughter is in the next room. And I didn't know how I was going to survive. I was like, God, please help, please. I'm like screaming audibly out loud for God to come save me as this guy is, you know, profusely hurting me. And I wish I could say that that was the first time, but it definitely wasn't. And I get this crazy idea in my mind. I'm like, what if I can tell him that I'm the one that needs help and get him to get help for me? I have no idea where I came up with this, but... So I start telling him, oh my God, you're so amazing. I don't deserve to be with a man like you. And I start just talking about how amazing he is. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And he's telling me that he wishes that, you know, I was his ex-wife and all these horrible words that I don't want to repeat about names that he called me as he's continually hurting me. And I'm like, I'm drunk. This is what I tell him. I said, I'm drunk. I was completely sober at the time. And I'm like, please... I'm like, please, I'm drunk. I don't deserve to be in your presence. Like, you know what you should do? You should call your mom to come get me. And four o'clock in the morning this time, right? Finally, I convinced this guy to call his mom four o'clock in the morning to come get me. And his mom comes to the house, opens the house. I, you know, can barely move at this point. And when he sees his mom, he throws his mom up against the wall because he's completely blacked out. Like, he has no idea what's going on. And um, at this time, I grabbed my phone because it was dead. He had my phone on the counter. It was dead. Grabbed my phone, grabbed my charger, and ran into the bathroom. And I plug in my phone, and I start charging it. I'm like, please, 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 please. And mm-hmm. the door starts having a loud, like, pounding on it. And he's at the door. And he's kicking the door in. So the door is like normal and where the door handle is, he starts kicking the door in up to where the door literally bends in half towards me. And at that point, my phone turned on. I called 911. It goes, 911, what's your emergency? As soon as that happened, he stops kicking the door that he grabs his mom and he leaves. I just remember falling on the ground profusely, hyperventilating, crying because I knew I wasn't going to die. Little did I know at that moment in my life, which there were so many more moments like that, that God was preparing me to be able to learn how to have the ability to influence people, to have the ability to learn how to persuade people. And I really would never have had that perspective before. Also in my life, I, I didn't know why, but I felt like I can't die tonight. Like, that's... <laughs> One thing that kept saying over my, in my mind over and over, I'm like, there is more for me. There's a purpose for me. There's something else for me. From there, finally getting to a place where he got help for his alcohol was still hurting me. And then I finally left. Um, I hated my body. I hated myself. I felt like an empty shell walking around. I don't know if you've ever felt like that, but in like deep levels of depression, if you've ever felt like super depressed, um it feels like you're like what's the point of being here and the only thing that was keeping me going was my little girl like i might have to be here for her at the time i went from two incomes to one and i was a sommelier at the time wine director at 21 years old i was really great and instead i went back to waitressing and um my chef at the restaurant I worked at, I worked at Papa Steakhouse Houston, and the chef was a bodybuilder. And he inspired me a lot. I looked online that night at different bodybuilding shows for women, and I saw these women that looked like 
muscly Barbies. Okay. They looked like muscle Barbies. And I'm like, oh, I want to look like that. They look confident. I remember looking at these girls. I'm like, I'll never, I never know how like it would be possible, but like, I wish I could look like this. And so I take the picture on my phone to the gym the next day. Walked into a random like LA fitness and I'm holding up the picture to the guy and I'm like, please train me for a show. <laughs> and this guy looks at me up and down and I swear it was such a long time. He just like holds back and looks up and down at me and he's like, it's going to take you over a year to even get close to looking like that. I'm like, no worries. And in nine months, um, I won my first show. And what happened during those nine months changed the trajectory of my life because every single day I had a coach in my corner telling me, you're a champion, first place, first place, you're a champion, you're a champion, you're a champion. And I would imagine me being on the stage and I would imagine like having a trophy in my hand, every single um, rep that I would get, I would imagine like the moments that I was hit in my face or the moments that I was punched or the moments that I was kicked, like I would imagine all that that happened to me and I would keep going, would keep going. Like my anger really fueled me in a weird way. And during the times that I would have to be on the Stairmaster, I started listening to motivational stuff. So every day I would be listening to motivational stuff and I would be listening to Tony Robbins. I would be listening to um, Billy Allsbrooks. And for 45 minutes a day, I was learning how I could change the way that my mind thought. And so after this period of time, I decide to become a personal trainer and I'm doing personal training and my body's right and my mind is still like so clouded with all the shit that had ever happened to me. So I decided that I was going to write a blog and I called it Embracing Your Inner Badass. And I wrote out this blog and I basically aired out all my dirty laundry as well as my family's of every single bad thing that had ever happened to me. Now, my family was pissed <laughs> at the time that this had happened, but I felt like it was a way of like weird healing. I was able to get all this stuff out of me. And um, a client of mine read my blog, sent it to a friend of hers who was on the board of the Lamborghini Festival. And a Lamborghini Houston contacted me and asked me to be the spokesmodel for Lamborghini Houston. I feel like that was the moment that a lot of the stuff in my life started to change for the better. At this event, I meet my very first mentor. And I was talking to somebody and they told me that the guy running the event knew Tony Robbins personally. Now, I was a huge Tony Robbins fan because I'd been listening to his stuff for 45 minutes a day, every day. His voice, you know, like, was just so um, evident. And... I personally walk up to this guy at the end of this festival day and I ask him if he knows Tony Robbins. And I had heard that he did. And he was like, yes, who told you that? I told him who. And I said, how do you know him? And he said, well, my mentor personally mentored Tony Robbins. My mentor was Jim Rohn. And if you've ever heard of Jim Rohn's work before, it's absolutely incredible, changed my life. And I was so desperate for success at this point in my life. I had been through so much. I felt like I was on a hamster wheel going anywhere. And I just, I was craving for something more. Have I ever had that moment where you're just like, ah, oh, I'm working so hard. Like all this stuff like is against me. And I just want more in my life. And that's where I was at. I was at a place of like desperation to be successful. Would do anything for that. And I feel like that's a difference. I feel like so many people... Um, don't do that. So many people are so comfortable with being comfortable that they're not willing to do anything in their possibility in order to get to the next level in their life. And that's why they stay the same. And I asked him, how do I get a mentor like this? And he asked me if I was serious. I said, yes, I'm super serious. And he goes, okay, we'll go home and I want you to download the challenge to succeed by Jim Rohn. And I want you to listen to it 10 times. And if you do, I will have a conversation with you. Went home that night, <laughs> that night, and uh, I spent $40 of the, the rest of my Discover credit card, because that's all I had. <laughs> and I bought this program. 
um, online eight or nine hour seminar. I listened to the whole entire thing within 24 hours and I messaged him one down, nine to go. And he asked me if I was serious. I said, yes. And he met me at a coffee shop that Friday. And I sat down at the coffee shop with him. At this time, I was back in school full time and biology, microbio, there's a biochemistry molecular biology pre-med with a 4.0. I was a single mom and um, I was waking up at 4 a.m. every single morning to study for this class and, and to learn as well as to personal train because I was a personal trainer. And then at night, I was in fine dining full time so I could be able to take care of everything. And I had a nanny that was helping me with my daughter. So I was doing a lot at once. And um, I'm just sitting in front of this guy that I barely know I'm bawling my eyes out, telling him about how my life isn't working, how it's not fair that this happened to me, this happened to me, my dad did this, this, my family lied to me, all this crap. And that it's not my fault. Like my family didn't have money to put me to school. That's why I'm not successful. And just like victim, 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 right? And he's like, you're on a hamster wheel. You're not going anywhere. I'm like, I know. He said, I want you to come work for me. And I'll teach you everything that I know. And that day was a Friday. That Monday, I quit school, quit my job, quit my business. And I started my first sales job. Have you ever had like a moment like that? I feel like we all get these opportunities and some of us miss them. Like huge opportunities that are right in front of our face that are scary as, as, as hell. Scary as hell. Um, and you have a choice whether you jump off the deep end or whether you play it safe. And that day you changed my life. I jumped off the deep end full on, went into the sales job. I knew nothing. I sucked so bad at sales. Sucked so bad. Um, and so I was super determined, of course, and I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I was at a smart home automations B2B job. My job was to develop business relationships with other custom home builders. And these were estates, so like 10,000 square feet and up, huge estates. And we would have to walk onto these properties and get this builder to give me their blueprints for us to wire their home with AV and then get the client to spend, you know, 30 grand to $3 million on smart home automation equipment. Here's the problem. I stuttered real bad. <laughs> I stuttered real bad when I got nervous. And um, I was super awkward. I never had really been around money before either. And so now all of a sudden, I'm all these super car events, um, all these black tie events, all these girls that are wearing designer. I feel super out of place. I feel very uncomfortable. Um, and I'm like faking it till you make it. Every morning, 4 a.m., I wake up and I buy every sales training course that I can get my hands on. And I start reading. I'm like, I'm going to learn this shit. Okay, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to learn it. And so I start studying and learning. I'm watching all the videos every single day. I would wake up, do that, get my daughter to school. I would go to work, get her home. She would come home. I would go back into study and study, 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 study. Every single day, go home, sleep at midnight, wake up 4 a.m., do it again the next day. And two and a half years later, I guess two years later, I was running the sales meetings, which was super cool. At that time, COVID hit. So COVID hits. And I decide I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to go off on my own. I know how to sell now. Everything's fine. You know, I was doing great. I was closing deals, like $175,000 deals. Like I was making money. Oh, it's so great. You know, and um, here's the problem. First of all, number one, I had a lot of my like clients and prospects that were trying to hit on me because I didn't know how to use the right tools in business to earn business without over smiling. I had no idea what was going on. I felt like I was doing something wrong. Um, and people weren't taking me seriously in sales. They just like looked at me like I was a young girl that really didn't know how to do anything. But at the same time, I knew how to make money. So that was that was one thing that was good. I decided to go on an entrepreneurial path and COVID hits, right? COVID hits, was not expecting that. Um, I started studying, you know, NLP, behavioral psychology, strategic intervention. I was really obsessed with learning how to get people to have in-person breakthroughs, just like Tony Robbins did. I was on his career team for three years. Um, went to his events, helped with his events. And I was really obsessed with like, how do you get somebody to change instantly? Their whole life thinking one way and an instant start thinking another way. I'm like, I want to be able to do that. And so I start learning how to do this and learning how to coach people. And my first idea was I'm going to coach men how to be better CEOs. <laughs> that was my worst idea. 
And so I am talking to different CEOs and I'm getting these guys to like yell at their bodies and like feel like lions and like do all this stuff. And and then I would have people talking to me, asking me about like how to communicate with their employees. And it just became a lot all at once. And as I was learning how to do all this, right, how to have these interventions and how to, you know, help people have breakthroughs, as COVID happened, there now is a gap in the market because now you have to go online. And I had no idea how to sell online, no idea how to make money online. And um, there's a big problem. Number one, I spent a lot of money and I had barely anything left in my name. Um, and then number two, we're in lockdown. So lose-lose situation. I had maxed out my credit cards. I had a Audi TTS that I couldn't afford anymore. And I'm with my daughter in a one-bedroom apartment in Houston. It's only $1,400 a month. My rent's due in two days. And I'm behind by $756. I'm like so mad at myself, feeling so guilty. I'm like, how did I get here again? Like I felt like rock bottom again. And I get on a call with a saleswoman. And this woman changed my life because she is trying to sell me on how to sell online. And the program cost $12,000. I never paid for a high ticket program in my life. And I was completely broke. <laughs> but this woman, let's just call her Susan. Susan did something that most salespeople don't do, which is she made me feel like I was good enough to figure it out. She believed in me so much that I believed in myself. And she, you know, really felt my problem really was connected to me, like took the time, made me feel special. And she's like, Kayla, she's like, if this is meant to be, it'll be. And, and if you'll figure it out, you will. And so I felt in my body, I'm like, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to learn. So it's supposed to do. And I look around my place and I'm like, this is not my life. This is not my life. Like, this is not what I'm here for. Like, this is not, this is not it. And I make this crazy ass decision and I'm like, fuck it. I sell every single thing I own. First, I sell my kids furniture. We slept on the floor that night on the ground. I sold mirrors. I sold my rug. I sold shoes perfume. I sold my very first designer bag. It was a neon yellow Burberry bag. I love that bag so much. Uh, it was definitely worth $1,000 for this bag. I sell it to this lady for $200. <laughs> and I go downstairs and I'm giving it to this lady outside, selling it on like offer up or something. And she looks at me and she's like, why are you selling this? And I'm like, because my dreams are more important. She just kind of like looked at me. She grabbed it, drove away in her white Lexus with red interior seats. So I remember her to this day. And uh, I just kept selling all my stuff. I sold everything that I owned. I was like, felt in my heart. I was like, things don't matter. Like it really proved to me like stuff doesn't really that matter that much. Like what matters is my destiny. What matters is my future. Had my daughter and me pack up my little two-door car with the rest of the stuff that we owned and we drove from Houston to Miami knowing nobody. I remember calling my dad on the way there, asking him to send me a cash app for money so I can get an Airbnb that night. Literally nothing, starting over, right? To everybody else, super crazy. To me, I'm like, this is my new life. <laughs> and I get there and I'm this Airbnb for one day, then the next Airbnb I'm in for a month, I basically am in this disgusting Airbnb with cockroaches, can't get out, it's nasty. Every single day, waking up at four o'clock in the morning and all I'm doing is studying the program that I paid for. I raised $4,200 in three days, paid my rent, paid for the course and drove. Like that's, that's what happened, that's what was it. And um, finally, being into a place where all I'm doing every single day is learning and developing. For one month, all I did was learn and develop. Closed my first client for $10,000 and was like, okay, like we're on a new path. And Miami scene, like I really feel like I really messed up, to be honest with you. And a lot of me felt really guilty because when you get into Miami, it is so fun. 
and everyone parties there. Everyone has a great time there. And um, met a guy, you know, and I just like completely felt like I lost myself. And that time, my daughter, they found out that she wasn't in Houston school. And so they got her out of school and she was failing like third grade or whatever it was. And so she has to go back to Houston to finish out the school year for six months. I had my daughter when I was 19 years old. I've never been an adult without a kid. And so for those six months where she was gone, I partied my ass off. And I I feel like I completely lost myself. I just was irresponsible, reckless, felt so unworthy, you know, and just was like off the deep end. And I knew I needed discipline back into my life. Like as all I needed was discipline. And you know what? I was like, I need a job again. I need a job. So I decided that I was going to go into a sales job. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get the discipline, go back in there. And I go work for this kid in social media. And he has me cold calling people 220 cold calls a day. Okay. Discipline? Hell yes. Absolutely. I hated it. I hated every second of it. But I started making 15 grand a month. And, um, you know, from that, I'm like, okay, I have money. I have my stuff back together. My daughter comes back. Life starts going better. And the thing is, is that every single day I hated my job. I hated what I did. I would call people. They would scream at me, cuss at me, hang up on me every day. And we were trained with these horrific sales tactics that didn't work, right? I would call somebody and they'd be like, I'm not interested. And I'm like, sir, of course you're not interested. If you were interested, I would be calling or you would be calling me instead of me calling you. Now, what's the biggest problem in your business today and how can I help you? Like just ridiculous sales tactics that do not work and that completely trigger buyer's resistance was taught to me. And I was working so hard and not getting anywhere. They would say things like, it's all about the numbers, about the numbers, about the numbers, about the numbers. And I was like, there has to be a different way. There has to be a different way that actually works. There has to be a different way that actually makes you feel good because right now I'm finally making money for my kid, but I feel like I'm being somebody that I'm not in order for me to be able to do that. And that's not okay with me. So this one moment, I have this guy call me back because I just called him a couple times. And he calls me and he's like, F you, you stupid me, blah, 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 like screaming at me. So I get this idea and I'm like, you know what? I know that we're supposed to just call him and be fine. I'm going to do something different. And I send him a picture of myself and my daughter. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I don't know whatever you went through, you know, with this company, but I'm only here to try to take care of my kid. And he sends me this long message back apologizing to me. I'm like, this is really interesting because I never had done anything like that. And now I'm receiving a way different response. So the next day I started thinking about like how I could connect with the people that I'm talking to in a way that makes me feel human, makes them feel human. And so I started coming up with these different strategies that felt more in alignment with my creativity um, and more in alignment with me as a woman. How can I make this process feel nurturing? How can I be creative with it? How can I be empathic and use my ability to be empathic to make this person feel good? And I started coming up with all these really interesting tools and I would try it out. I would like come up with one, try it out, come up with another and try it out. And the things that were working with great. And I had a few girlfriends ask me, Kayla, I know you're selling. I have this course. Can you please help me with it? Or I have this product that's in my home. Can you help me with it? And I think I charged them like $500 at the very beginning. And I started building out their sales processes, building out their sales scripts. And they started making money. And I was like, ah. Oh. I'm onto something. I'm onto something. And from that moment, I decided that I was going to help women in the sales space. My first year of sales coaching with women was only coaching. I had no idea how to run a business. And it was my time <laughs> for theirs, right? <laughs> time for money. And um, it was great because we would sell a lot of money. I would do 25 grand in a week. And I'm like, hell yeah, I don't have to work anymore. And I went and sell for three more weeks and I would be, you know, tending to clients. And all of a sudden it was again and again and again, 
being in this constant cycle of having money, not having money, having money, not having money. Um, and it just wasn't serving me whatsoever. I was also blowing money. I was getting my hair blown out like once a week. So stupid. Dry bar, me were best friends, you know? And um, I was just in this place of like not feeling worthy of the money that was coming in. And at this point in my life, I had realized I'd been through so much stuff and that I was seriously the problem of the constant up and downs, the constant not feeling worthy enough, the constant, you know, um, not feeling grounded, not feeling stable. I'm like, man, I really hate who I am. I don't actually love me. And um, made a huge decision to do a really deep trauma course, a, a dive deep, craziest trauma course I've ever been through four months long was called Ascension Leadership Academy. And I went once a month to Austin, Texas for four months and yelled somatically, getting things out of my body that weren't serving me and just made a decision that was going to completely change my life. It was the hardest thing that I've ever done and definitely the most rewarding because it taught me how to be a woman, taught me how to be a leader taught me how to step into my responsibility as a mom, as a a person, taught me how to focus out, taught me how to heal all the deepest parts in me that just were not serving me whatsoever. And from being able to do deep work on myself, it gave me new opportunities in my life. Um, I got an opportunity to work in event sales, went to different events, sold in the back of the room. We did ticket sales for a huge event, Growth Video Live. I had Patrick Bet David in it, Alex Hermosi, um, Gary Vanderchuk. I was running a team of 14 people. We were doing $800,000 a month. You know, I was making well over $30,000 a month myself. And it was just so interesting watching the, the growth of where I had been before to where I was. And then from there, moving into another opportunity where I started working with coaches, and I did that for a few months, you know, thinking that I was going into partnership, but I wasn't. And we had 270 coaches underneath us, some doing nothing, barely starting, some doing a million dollars a month, getting that experience to where I finally was like, I have what it takes to build my own company. Because before, I didn't think I did. Before I was helping other people build theirs, ladies, please make sure you get contracts in place if anybody ever wants to do business with you or says you're a business partner or says that you have equity in something. You do not unless it is in legal writing. I've learned that mistake way too many times, which is all good because they all serve me. But finally making the decision to say, hey, you know what, I'm going to start my own sales company, building elite saleswomen from the ground up, first week in business having to take out a, a loan in order to be able to make sure that my people get paid uh, so many up and downs to building the very first ever sales training program specifically designed for women to learn how to sell in a feminine way that serves them. Learn how to use every single thing that I've ever learned as well as the psychology, the mindset, of stuff, the real skills, be able to overcome objections and follow up in a really powerful way, how to sell in person, how to sell from stage. Like, like I put every single thing that I've ever learned in there because you as a woman get to learn how to do this in a way that really serves you. We did over six figures in less than four months. And now being at this really cool opportunity where we have just joined forces with seventh level. And now we're creating seventh level you know, the female side of this, female division. I mean, thinking about this, like, this is so crazy. How are you to tell me that a young girl, I started at IOP, <laughs> I started at IOP, 16, 17 years old, waitress, and now to today to where we're partnering with seventh level. How the hell does that happen? And I'm telling you that uh, it's only by the grace of God. Like, there's no way. There's no way that it was anything else. And, you know, my mission in life, like I want to go to third world countries. I want to help women and kids escape domestic violent relationships and be able to acquire the skills like learning how to sell so they can actually have a different life, actually um, be able to provide for their kids, for them to be able to feel worthy, 
Can you imagine what this world would look like if it was full of worthy women? This whole entire time, God was preparing me from such a young age to be able to be in a place where I am today, to be able to influence, to be able to share the skills that I had to learn. I had to learn because I was in a survival place to be able to show them to you and share them to you. Um, I know my story is really long, so if you leave it this far, I really appreciate you for continued listening. You have a story, too. You are so important. I don't know your story, but I know that you've survived every single bad day that you've ever been through, which means that you are so strong and you're so powerful. You know, for this show and for the coming episodes, like, we're going to go into more tactical sales stuff, but I wanted you to understand the perspective of what I have from the very beginning so that you can um, see that I'm really here to honor and support you. Like, whatever you need, like, I'm happy to be able to create content for you and create ideas for you and create solutions for you because I didn't have that in my corner. I always looked for a woman that was a sales mentor that could guide me that could show me the ropes, that could show me what was happening, and it didn't exist. So I was always looking for the future version of myself that I could be, um, and I take responsibility as being that for you so I can honor you. Please subscribe to this channel. Um, subscribe, hit that little um, subscribe button on the podcast. Um, my Instagram is Kayla Living Boldly. Kayla Living Boldly. And we have a really amazing Facebook group called Women in Sales that we do trainings as well as client interviews in there every single week. So our intention is just to pour into you, to give back, to honor the crap out of you, to show you what's possible, to show you the feminine perspective that really serves you in a heart-driven way. As a little girl, my mom taught me this really amazing quote by Mary Kay Ash. She said that if you shoot for the moon, you may land among the stars. Your dream is never too big. You are worthy of the inspirations that are inside of your heart. Like you are so destined for greatness. And God has such a beautiful plan for your life, regardless of what you believe in. I honor you. I honor the woman that you are. And I look forward to getting to know you better. Have a good day.